Good morning, everybody. It is Thanksgiving Sunday, not in, not what we envisioned uh, as as a typical CT family Sunday. This is not at all what we hoped for, but uh, here we are, and we're doing everything we do to be wise and be safe and be careful. And I hope that this <clears throat> this time together today blesses you, encourages you, and strengthens you. I've got a word that's been on my heart concerning uh, being thankful for God's mercy for uh, for a number of weeks, and I've uh, been excited about sharing this with you today. And looking forward to it. We're going to begin with a worship song, then we'll spend just a few minutes in prayer, continue on in worship, and then get into our word here just shortly. So uh, right there where you are in your home with your family, worship with these songs and sing these songs right there in the living room just as if we were gathered here together with me in this room as we want to be and wish we were. But uh, God's with us wherever we are. It doesn't matter where we are or what we're doing. You may be at work this morning watching this on your phone. You may be driving down the highway listening uh, as you're driving, uh, you know, at, at work, having to do what you have to do to keep things going. Thank you for all that you do. Holy Spirit, would you bless today and touch us wherever we are, whatever we're doing. Let your anointing, your blessing, and your power be rich and real in our homes, in our vehicles, wherever we are, whatever we're doing. That today, Lord God, would be special. Today would be a day that you touch hearts, lives, bodies, and minds. And Lord God, that it's your Holy Spirit that does all the work and goes wherever we are and whatever we're doing. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King, His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things, His love endures forever. This morning as we uh, go to the Lord in prayer, I'm not going to go specifics on anything because some people don't, may not want their, their situation known uh, publicly beyond what they've shared and I don't want to take that, I don't want to take that liberty to, to do that. We know because of our prayer page we've got several families that are dealing directly with COVID that have been sick. My own family, my son-in-law uh, lost his dad uh, this, uh, this last week and uh, just, just really a heartbreaking thing. But uh, we want to pray today for all, all of our church and church family, our community, state, and country. Of course, the election stuff still going on, uh, all, all the stuff that's happening. We want to pray over all these things. But what I want to pray as far as COVID goes, I want to pray healing for those that are dealing with it. Um, and I want to pray uh, blessings for those that are going through quarantine because of it. And 
uh, an issue this morning that was brought uh, brought to my attention, which I already knew, but it, it just helped me to focus on it. And thank you for the person that shared that, um, the financial end of this thing, because a lot of companies aren't being as generous and as kind about this thing as some others. So this is affecting this is affecting homes families in ways beyond just not feeling good or having to be quarantined, being away from people. This is financial, and it's all that. Then that turns into emotional, spiritual, and issues of of all kinds of things that are coming about because of this thing. So. Uh, we want to pray today, God, to bless and touch those that are dealing with the virus in any way, shape, or form. You have it. You're quarantined. And your job situation is being, you know, is pressure being put on because of that. I know that's going on uh, with several of our families within our church and people we know and, and we care about. So we want to pray for them this morning. Uh, if you have a prayer need, go over to the CT Praise, P-R-A-Y-S page. I always say it that way because it sounds like CT Praise. If you're looking for CT Praise, as in praise the Lord, you're not going to find us that way. So CT Praise, P-R-A-Y-S, and uh, share any needs you have over there. Or text me, let me know. I'll do a list later today of uh, current, current needs and current events there. So uh, we'll do that. Would you pray with me this morning? We'll continue in worship and uh, believe God to bless us today. Father, in the name of Jesus today, you know the needs of this church family. I pray for Calvary Temple, Lord, for each and every person that's dealt with this coronavirus personally because they've had the virus. We pray healing, restoration, and blessing for them. I pray blessing, Lord, over those that have had to be quarantined because of the virus. And, uh, Father, we believe for strength, encouragement, blessing, Lord Jesus, for comfort for my own family as they've dealt with the loss because of this, Father. I pray blessings, Lord God, over our community, our state, our country. Father God, that all this election stuff would get behind us. And whatever, whatever the outcome is, Lord, we trust that it's going to be your will and your plan for this country for this hour and that you will bless your children and you'll take care of your own. I believe you to touch our hearts and bless our time that we spend together today. Father, that today would be a day of victory, a day of encouragement, a day of passion and power. And that, Father God, that your Holy Spirit would infiltrate every home, every family, every heart, every life today. And that, Lord, this will be a special day and a special time where your Holy Spirit does the work that only he can do in hearts and lives this morning. And I give you the praise and honor for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, hopefully we'll look at we'll look at things over the next uh, few days maybe we'll be able to meet back in person next Sunday we'll make that decision probably by Friday I'll work with the board and we'll talk about it and see what we want to do it'll depend on cases depend on situations circumstances of course we're going to be safe we're going to be wise we're not afraid we're wise and there is there is a vast difference between that uh, we're believing God to give us the wisdom and the blessing to make sure that we don't be a problem and we can do what we do here. It uh, may not be the way we want to do it. It's certainly not the way I want to do it. I hope I never have to go back to this after the spring. But here we are, and it's going to be okay. God's going to use this. God's going to bless us, and God's going to touch people's hearts and lives through this time and this ministry that we get to share together. So uh, encourage you and remind you to please send in your tithes and offerings. The address is there on the, uh, the Calvary Temple Facebook page. Uh, you can send it to the, to the church address, wherever. There's a couple places you can send it. It'll get to us. And uh, just believe God to bless you, your home, and your family as you continue to be faithful in every way that you can. And uh, let's continue on in worship this morning, and then we'll get to a word just in a couple of minutes.
God, we give thanks. You may be seated. Praise the Lord, friends, this morning as we continue on talking about our unlimited God and His unlimited love, the unlimited agape that He has for us, we want to think on the, in the lines of thanksgiving. And how thankful are you today for the love of God, the agape of God? Because within the agape of God, this package of things that God provides for us through Himself, there is everything that you need in your life because He loves you and cares for you so much that it, it is an entire package of things that God has provided for us. And it's incredible because when you stop and you realize just exactly what God has done for us, besides giving us a home in heaven, but we, we have a blessing here in this world that, that can't be measured because we have him. And in him, we have everything that we need. In him, we have our life, our hope, our peace, our strength, everything that we, that we need and everything we should desire. I said should desire because this world's full of stuff. It's full of all kinds of things that we that we desire, that we even lust after in some cases. And, and, uh, but, he, but God, God in his rich and wonderful mercy we're going to talk about today, specifically focused on his mercy in the, in the umbra, the umbrella of agape. We're going to look today at the story of David and Bathsheba and what David wrote in the Psalms as a part of that experience. So I'm going to be in Psalm 106. Most of these scriptures will be on the screen. All of my Psalms will be on the screen because I'm going to use uh, several passages of the Psalms. Um, I will be looking at uh, 2 Samuel chapters 11 and 12, but not a lot of detail there. I probably will read some detail when it comes to what Nathan had to say to David and the parable David that uh, was shared with David by Nathan to get his attention and help him, help him see something I'm pretty sure he already knew that he had messed up, uh, but he hid it. He thought, he thought he'd gotten away with it. But what David wrote in the Psalms, these Psalms of David directly connected to and directly the result of what happens with he and Bathsheba and their situation are powerful. And as we're thankful today for the agape of God, for the love, mercy, grace, peace, hope, all the things that God provides for us, I want us to think on this line today as we share these thoughts and as we get into this word this morning on how, on how God's agape has given us everything that we have. It's, it's beautiful. It is a wonderful, beautiful thing. And I'm so thankful today for what we have in Christ. And Give you something to smile about here before I get into my word this morning. Somebody shared this with me, and I really honestly can't remember who gave it to me. I apologize. If you gave it to me, thank you, because I think it's good. Uh, there was a visiting preacher that was going to a men's breakfast at a farm, uh, farm out in the country, and uh, he'd come to, the, come to the home, a nice place, and that morning he asked the, the, host, the host farmer, would you, would you say grace over the meal? So the old farmer begins this this way. He says, Lord, I hate buttermilk. The old preacher opened one eye and wondered himself where this was going, and the farmer then loudly proclaimed, Lord, I hate lard. Now, the, the, the old preacher was getting kind of worried, and he was about to stop this thing, and right before he could, the old man said, and then, Lord, uh, you know I don't care much for raw white flour. And just about the time this old preacher was about to say, stop this, he continued on, he said, but Lord, 
when you're mixing them all together and bake them up, I do love fresh biscuits. So, Lord, when things come up like that we don't like, when life gets hard, we just don't understand what you're saying to us. We just need to relax and wait till you're done mixing, and probably it'll be something even better than biscuits. Amen. I like that. Because we've got a lot of stuff mixed up in this world right now, but when God brings his blessing, when God brings his agape to the table, it changes everything. And we begin to see the beauty and, and the, the wonder and the glory and the strength that we need through, through Jesus Christ and what he's done for us by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit. Thank God this morning for what we have in him, and thank God this morning for his love, grace, and mercy. And uh, let's get into our word today, Psalm 106. The, uh, the, there are five verses in Psalm 106, and we're going to share all of them with you. Praise the Lord, O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can declare his praise? Blessed are those who keep justice, and he who does righteousness at all times. Remember, remember me, O Lord, with favor you have toward your people. O visit me with your salvation, that I may see the benefit of your chosen ones, that I may rejoice in the gladness of your nation, that I may glory in with your inheritance father in the name of jesus may we truly give thanks today for all that you have done for us for the blessings that we experience because of who you are lord and we let we ask you today let your anointing god touch my heart and life today to bring this word and father god as those that that are with us today receive this word i'm praying blessing strength and encouragement over each and every home each and every family each and every life and that by your spirit today we'll be blessed touched and encouraged and we honor and thank you for it in jesus name amen praise the lord so this morning, I want to share with you. I want to share with you some thoughts today on this because the story of David and Bathsheba is is one of the one of those moments where you look and you think about what we know about David. David is an interesting interesting individual. We know that when we meet David, he's a man after God's own heart. He's anointed to be king of Israel. He's a shepherd boy, and uh, he becomes a warrior and he becomes a great king. But here we have a situation that you find in Second Samuel chapters eleven and twelve, and what you have is a man, as we begin at, as we begin the story, the, the springtime of the year, this the Bible even tells us there in chapter 11 in the first verse that this is when the kings would go out to battle and would go out to war. And David sent his, his commander Joab and his, his army out to battle, didn't go with them. He should have been there. Had he been there, we wouldn't have this story today. Uh, but the end result of this, like everything else that the Word of God gives us practically, the end result of this is our encouragement, our strength, and even know that we completely and totally blow it, the mercy of God, which is what we're focusing on today, the mercy of God is unlimited, incredible, amazing, and that God will, will show us His mercy, His love, His favor, His grace in powerful, incredible ways this morning So, uh, and every day of our lives. So, so David should have been in the battlefield. David should have been out with his troops. Instead, he was home. And as he is home, he, he's out strolling one night on the, on the roof of the palace there. And he looks down and sees a, a beautiful woman. Now, he's the king. David's entitled. He's got some entitlement, the rules and the way things work. Uh, we even know this because whenever the children of Israel started wanting a king, Samuel told them, said, listen, if you have a king, he's going to take your land. He's going to take you. He's going to take your people. He's going to take your money. He's going to do whatever he wants to do. He's the king. Because that's what worldly kings do. And David, apparently, he slipped into some worldly mindset here because he sends for this woman. And when he sends for her, uh, he finds out that she is who she is and, and that she's the daughter of Eliam and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Now, David brings her up and he, he, he's with her. And he brings her in. And the result of this, of this sin, this adulterous sin, is that she becomes pregnant. Well, David devises a scheme, and he sends, for, he sends word to Joab, Joab, send home Uriah so that Uriah can come home and, and be with his wife, and then the suspicion is gone. Uriah will think that that's his child, and, and that'll, be, that'll all be well and fine. David didn't count on Uriah being a man, of, a man of honor, a man of integrity, a man of good character. Uriah, as long as the, the, his fellow soldiers were, were out in the field fighting, he was not willing to go in to be to the comfort of home, to be with his wife and to spend time with her. He slept outside. He stayed out in the, in the courtyard, if you will, in the manner of speaking, and did not go in to be with his wife. This is a problem for David. David's scheme has now unraveled on him. So David devises another scheme. He sends word to Joab. Here comes Uriah back, and I want you to put him in the hottest part of the battle. I want you to put him down in the front row, 
and I want you to get, make sure that he gets in, that gets down there and 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 uh, gets right in the heat of the battle. So, uh, and it even says that he may be struck down and die. That's in verse number uh, fifteen of chapter eleven. If you're trying to keep up with where I'm heading here, so so Uriah goes in, he fights, and he winds up in the battle, and Uriah the, the Uriah the Hittite dies. So David now gives gives the situation time. In, in, in the you know, time of mourning, all that kind of stuff, brings Bathsheba to his home, marries her, and then as this, thing un- uh, the, as this situation unfolds, David is in a situation now he thinks he's covered his tracks. He thinks he's done what he needed to do. He thinks that he's got this taken care of. But God, who's rich in mercy, will not leave us in a place of sin, and he will not leave us in that mess. I can tell you from my own experience, an experience of, of countless people that I can tell you that I know their stories, that there are, there are occasion after occasion, situation after situation, where we find ourselves in a mess, we find ourselves in, the, in, in a circumstance that we have no business being in, some, whatever it is, sinful, you just name it whatever, it, whatever it may be. But God, who's rich in mercy, he loves us, touches us, blesses us, helps us, has someone speak to our life, speak to our heart. It may be a pastor like me that just happens to bring a message that happens to strike a chord in your heart. Uh, however, whatever. It may be something you read, something you hear. Maybe a song coming on the radio. Maybe somebody talking on the radio that, on one of these Christian stations that's just talking about, about life and about situations and circumstances. Whatever. doesn't matter how it happens. The good news is it happens because God will not leave us in a state of sin if he can help it. And he can help it because he's God. He loves us. He cares for us and has a tremendous plan for our lives. And friends, I want to tell you today that God sent Nathan. Nathan, Nathan comes to David, and, they, and he begins to tell David a story about a rich man and a poor man. The rich man had flocks and had herds. The poor man they didn't have anything except one little ewe lamb. And I'm not going to read the entire thing in detail for you here. You can read over it there as you have time today and, uh, and look at it yourself. But what, what occurs here is the story that Nathan tells, the parable he gives David, brings anger out in David, and, and the end result is that that, that, that poor man's little ewe lamb was taken by the rich man and, and taken away from him, and, and it, was, it was just it was an injustice. And David, David's mad. David gets angry, the Bible says, and that, that he stands up and he says, whoever this is, he should die. And Nathan looks at him and said, you're the man, verse number 7. And you're the man. Thus says the Lord of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel and delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your keeping and gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had not had been too little, I would have given you much more. Why then have you despised the command of the Lord to do evil in his sight? You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You have taken his wife to be your wife and killed him and have killed him with the sword of the people of Ammon. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, behold, I will raise up an adversary against you to take your own house and will take your wives from before your eyes and give them to your neighbor. And he shall, be with, he shall lie with your wives in the sight of the sun. For you did this thing secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel, before the sun. So David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, the Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. However... Because of this decree, uh, you have given occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme the child who is born to you shall also die. And Nathan departed his house. Now we know the rest of the story that David mourned and David, David fasted and prayed and, and was just beside himself and just angry and frustrated. And then his servants, if you go on down the story, his servants were afraid to tell David the child was dead. And David understood. David recognized, you know, they're talking and whispering and something must have happened. And uh, they're confused. They're totally confused because, because you know, if we t- you know, why is he acting this way? And this is one of those passages where the Word tells us that, that David has, the, has this, this mindset that I think has helped a lot of people that, uh, you know, the child is dead. He can't bring him back, but he'll go to him one day because of the mercy and grace of God. And, friend, I'm going to tell you something today. We're going to look at Psalm 32, Psalm 51, and then I'm going to close in just a few minutes in Psalm 138. And I'm going to tell you what we're looking at. We're looking in Psalm 32 and 51 at the Psalms that were, that were directly related to this situation, directly related to what, uh, what transpired in 2 Samuel chapter 11 and 12 with David and Bathsheba and losing this child. And we know later that Solomon was born of Bathsheba and David and that he became the, the wisest king of Israel and, and uh, a man of pretty great renown when it comes down to it. Uh, confusing because he winds up letting a lot of sin get, uh, get, get overlooked within the, the nation of Israel. But nevertheless, we have a man here that, 
that God, in his promise to David, continued on the line. And, and of course, Jesus is fulfillment of the ultimate promise that God made to David that, in, that, uh, excuse me, that, that one of his descendants would always be on the throne. And uh, Jesus fulfills that once and for all. But today, friends, I want, to, I want you to look with me today as we think about what David, what David did and we think about what God did. Because what God did is the point of the story. What God did is, is show mercy, grace, and love to David in a situation where David wasn't worthy of mercy, grace, and love. David sinned. David knew better than this. This wasn't anything. Not only did he, did he, did he commit adultery, not only did he do that, but he committed murder. And then he had a whole scheme to cover it up. And, and when that scheme unraveled on him, he had the man killed. And then, and then God, who is rich in mercy, as well, I said about a half a dozen times already, and I'll keep saying it because it's true, that, that God in his love, grace, and mercy extends this to David and says, David, I'm not leaving you here. I'm not going to let you stay in this sin. I'm going I'm to confront you with it, and I'm going to get a hold of your heart, get a hold of your life, and we're going to restore, restore you to because I've still got stuff for you to do. I've still got plans for you, and I've got a plan for your children and your children's children down the line until Messiah is born through the tribe of Judah and through the, until that Messiah comes and, uh, and fulfills my word over and over and over again. In countless ways. So as we think about the unlimited agape, we're talking about unlimited mercy here, and we're going to look at a couple of passages in the Psalms that give us that give us that understanding, and it's powerful this morning. So I'm going to go to Psalm chapter 32 and begin reading here. <coughs> excuse me, in Psalm chapter chapter number um, 32, it said, "Blessed is he whose transgression transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered." <coughs> Blessed is the man whom, to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into drought of the summer. Selah. I acknowledge my sin to you, and in my integrity I have not hidden. And I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Selah. For this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray to you in a time when you shall be found. Surely, in a flood of great waters, they shall not come near to him. For you are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You, sur you surround me with the songs of deliverance. Selah. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with bit and bridle, else they would not come near to you. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord, uh, mercy shall surround him. But glad, I'm sorry, be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. So in Psalm 32, what we have is a couple of important places here, because David starts out with, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. David understood that his transgression had been forgiven. David committed adultery, committed murder, and, and, and covered it all up, and, and God God said, you know what, I'm not leaving you there, David. I'm, I want you to be forgiven. I want you to own this sin. And David understood. David confessed. David said, I'm a, I'm a sinner and uh, that I messed up. And God, God in his, who was rich in mercy, forgave him, loved him, and helped him. And I want, you to, I want you to see there in verse number 5, he said, I acknowledge my sin to you and my iniquity I have not hidden. And I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Neighbor, if you've done things you shouldn't do, said things you shouldn't, said act in the way you shouldn't act, confess it to God. You don't have to confess to me or anybody else. You don't need anybody but, but Jesus. And you confess that to him and ask him to forgive you. It's done. Because God, who is rich in mercy, loves you, cares for you, and does not want to leave you in a sinful state, he is doing everything he can do to, to make sure that you make heaven your home one day. And friend, until that time, God will not leave us in a sinful condition the holy spirit will convict us convince us and help us to see that yes we've messed up and yes there's forgiveness for us and yes that we have life hope and peace in jesus christ because of that and i want to remind you again we're talking about mercy today and um, in verse number down in verse number uh number 10 and number 10 i believe it is yes there it is many sorrow many sorrows shall be to the wicked but he who trusts in the lord mercy shall surround him unlimited mercy that love that grace that passion of god for your heart soul and life is that mercy that comes now that word mercy we find that there's, there's several ways that that word has been translated various ways in scripture and all of them are beautiful and amazing because it all comes back to the love the the unconditional love the mercy uh, the uh the, the loving kindness, all of those ways that it's translated in various places throughout the scriptures. And friends, I'm telling you something special and real today. 
that we need to get our heart and our minds wrapped around. And that is the very fact of God's love care for us that brings the mercy, that brings his Holy Spirit to bear, to, to work in us great, incredible, and wonderful things that aren't available to us any other way. There is no other way we can experience what we experience in Christ outside of his love, which brings mercy, which brings grace, which brings victory, and brings the passion, power, and love of Jesus Christ to our hearts and to our lives. We've got to open up ourselves to understand and realize today that we've not gone too far. We've not messed up too bad. There's nothing that we've done that God can't and won't forgive. There's nothing that we've done that the Holy Spirit won't tell us, you know what, you messed up. You said it, you did it, you shouldn't have done it, and now let's get this right. Let's straighten this up, and let's get ourselves to the place of, of, of restoration and blessing. And don't we've got to stop this thing, because I'm going to tell you something, there's been a trend throughout, throughout the years that a lot of people beat themselves up, and I'm just no good, and I'm, I'm damaged goods, and I've said, I've done, I've acted, I've done something I shouldn't have done, and i got news for you, friends, this morning. If this very morning, before you had a chance to join me here uh, on, this, on, this, on this time we spend together here on, on our Facebook page, and those of you watching by DVD later, if this morning you have done, said, or acted in a way, and you're feeling bad about it right now, I want to tell you what you do. Right now, say, Jesus, forgive me. You know what happened? It's done. It's over. It's gone. It, 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 cannot be, it won't be brought back up again because the Lord throws that stuff into the sea of forgetfulness. And the great and wonderful news for you this morning is, is that it's yours and it's yours to have any time that you need it. And Because we're going to make mistakes. We're going to slip. We're going to stumble. We're going to say, do, act in a way we shouldn't act. And when we do, that mercy, that unlimited mercy is ours. Because he loves us with a love that cannot be measured or even quantified in any way that, that can be imagined. So verse 11, be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, you upright in heart. Praise God, we shout for joy today of the forgiveness, the mercy, the grace, the love of God that is available only, only through Jesus Christ and what he done for us on Calvary's cross and what he is doing for us day in and day out through the work and the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Now let's look at chapter 51, Psalm 51. Again, it will be on the screen for you if everything works the way it's supposed to here this morning. Have mercy on me, O God. According to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. I just told you he blots those things out. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done that, that this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak, and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in my sin my mother conceived me. Behold, your desi you desire truth in the inward parts. In the hidden part you will make known to me wisdom. Pur purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Creating me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me to the joy of your salvation, and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God. The God of my salvation and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you do not desire a sacrifice, or else I would give it. You do not de delight in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. These, O God, you will not despise. Do good in your, do good in your good pleasure design. Build the walls of Jerusalem. Then you shall be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offerings and whole burnt offering, and they shall offer bulls on your altar. Friends, I've got great news for you this morning that you just heard me read that you have the loving kindness, the mercy of God. Your transgressions have been blotted out. They're wiped away and washed away forever. Our iniquities have been washed away. We've been cleansed from our sin. And today, if we have asked Jesus Christ to do that, he's done it. It's over, it's gone, and it's behind us, and it's past us. And I love verse number 10. He said, creating me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And I'll just tell you this morning, if you've messed up time and time again, maybe you've got that same struggle, maybe you've got that same frustration, maybe you've got that same habit, that same even addiction in some cases. i got good news for you this morning. If you will ask him to create in you a clean heart, what that means is he will, he will take that heart of yours, 
and he'll make it brand new. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Wash away that stuff. Wash away the, dr- the junk that has no place in my life and renew a steadfast spirit within me. That steadfast spirit, I got good news this morning about this. That steadfast spirit says the next time you're faced with that temptation, you won't surrender to that temptation because you get that steadfast, strong, steady spirit in your heart and in your life today. I think about the word where he says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Neighbor, I, I just want to tell you again this morning, you don't have to be bound you don't have to feel like you're no good you don't have to feel like your life is wasted and washed up because you've sinned and sinned and sinned and sinned and sinned the mercies of God are new every morning and new every day and it's ours to have it's ours to enjoy it's ours to experience if we will only come to him and ask him to create that clean heart ask him to do in our lives what only he can do and give us that steadfast spirit the result of that is awesome as well about down about verse number 13, he says, you know what? Because you've done this for me, then I'm going to show others. I'm going to tell others about you. I'm going to tell others what you've done. And sinners shall be converted to you. Praise God. The result of your life and your experience and your situation is powerful because what God has done in you and what God has done for you, somebody else may see that and say, whoa, yeah, wait a minute. I need That's what I need. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'd like to have happen for me. That's what I'd like to experience in my life and my heart. How do I do that? And we tell them it's Jesus and Jesus alone. It's his forgiveness. It's his love, his grace, and his mercy. And we are thankful. We're talking about Thanksgiving this week. We are thankful to God that he has that salvation for us through his love, through his grace, through his mercy, through life and life everlasting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I close today in Psalm 138. See, Psalm 138 is another of these powerful, powerful psalms that we find in the Word that just really speak to, it speaks to our lives. It speaks to our experience. Once we've experienced Jesus, once we've experienced life and hope and peace in Him, then it takes us into this mindset that, the, that, that David, uh, the psalmist here, shares with us in Psalm 138. Now, Psalm 138, again, it's on your screen for you as, uh, as I begin to read as long as things work the way they're supposed to work. And I keep saying that because sometimes they don't. I will praise you with my whole heart before the gods. I will sing praises to you. I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. In the day when I cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. Yes, they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly, because the proud he knows from afar off. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hand. Friends, when we see that, that, that passage, among so many others in the Psalms, what we have here is a powerful, powerful word from God that speaks directly to where we are and what we're experiencing. You know, he talks about praising God with his whole heart. That's thanksgiving. That's, that's adoration. That's love. And, he, and he's praising him. For what? Verse number two. He said, I'm going to worship. I'm going to praise your name for your loving kindness, your truth. You magnified your word, your word above all your name. And he talks about how he cried to the Lord. But then I want to get down now to verse, uh, verse number seven. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. I know I'm talking to people today that have been directly affected and had the coronavirus. I'm talking to people today that have been quarantined because of the coronavirus. I'm talking to, I'm talking to people that have had the symptoms of coronavirus and your test came back negative, which, is, which has been surprising to most doctors and especially those that, that have gone through this. I'm talking to people today that your finances have been hurt by COVID. I'm talking to people today that you're, that you're just emotionally and, and you're struggling. Maybe you're dealing with depression, anxiety, and, you know, what are we going to do? How are we going to do it? What about this? What about that? I can tell you, as your pastor, I, I'm, certainly I'm not, I'm not at the end of my rope. I've, 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 I've cried some tears over this. I've had those moments. I stood at a graveside a, a, a week ago tomorrow with my son-in-law delivering his father's message for his memorial service, celebrating his life. And it just, it's, it's, it's just such a hurtful thing and a hard thing. But neighbor, I've got good news for you this morning. 
Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. We are walking in the midst of trouble. We are dealing with a virus that we can't see. That a lot of people that I've talked to don't, that, that's had it said, I don't know where I got it. I don't know how I, tra- how I transit. And there are many people that do know they were this to this place, that place, and they know that that's where it came from because they were in contact with somebody sick. But there's people that, within our church family that have had this thing, and they don't know where they got it. They don't know when they were exposed. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And that takes us right perfectly in line with what we're talking about this morning. It's his mercy that does that. Mercy is God's way of looking at us with that grace with that love with that care with that compassion and concern that says i don't care where you've been i don't care what you've done i don't care how bad you messed up i just told you all ago and you know the story david messed up as bad as a person can mess up he he's multiple fronts here that he's committed sin and god sent nathan to him and said david let me tell you what happened i know what happened i see everything and david was forgiven there were consequences there always are but David was forgiven and David was restored. And the promise of God made to David that, it, that there would be one of his descendants on the throne is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And today we are thankful that we have what we have in Christ. And as I conclude our time together today, I want to just speak directly to you this morning. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Maybe you, you have made that decision. Maybe lots of times, it doesn't matter. But you're, here listening, you're watching this or listening to this this morning, and as you hear the words that I'm telling you, that I'm giving you this message, you are thinking about it and you realize, you know what, there are things in my life that don't belong. There are sinful things that I'm doing that I've got to stop. So I take you back to Psalm 52. A man who was caught in his sin, and he, this, this, was, this passage in Psalm 30, 52, 32, and 50, 32 and 51 were the direct result written in response to that situation. And I take you back to verse number 10, creating me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. That is a prayer God will always answer. That is a prayer God will answer. And as I often share it this way, this is as simple as A, B, C. Accept that you need a Savior. Believe that Jesus Christ has done everything for you on Calvary's cross and confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. If you will do that, and I'm going to lead you in just a moment in that prayer, I would encourage everybody watching, just because, to say this prayer with me today. For the first time or for the thousandth time, doesn't matter. Would you please pray with me today and ask Jesus into your heart and life if you need to, or rededicate your life and claim his promises for you. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these folks. I believe, God, for you to touch them and bless them and help them today to know your life, hope, and peace, to know a clean heart, and experience that today in Jesus name now would you repeat this prayer after me dear Jesus I believe that you died for me and I know I'm a sinner and I need to be saved forgive my sin be the Lord of my life create in me that clean heart oh God renew a steadfast spirit within me and help me to overcome the sin in my life and I believe you to do it today in Jesus name amen Friend, if you prayed that prayer, I'd love to hear from you. You can comment in the comments here. You can also send me an email to ctagpastor at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear that I touched your heart today and blessed you. And uh, that, that this message and this time we spend together today meant something to you and really blessed you and touched your life. Uh, and touch it for eternity. Because God desires one thing from every human being, and that is a life that claims his promises and that accepts him as Lord and Savior. That's the point. That's, what, that's, that's everything that God has done comes back to that one thing that we can have life in him and have it more abundant. And he desires to bless you here and now, and he desires to bless you uh, with a home in heaven. And that only comes through a life and a relationship with him through accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And I hope and pray that you've done that this morning. And I congratulate you, congratulate you if you did and encourage you with that. And uh, praise God for it. Well, friends, I will be back here tonight at 6 o'clock live at, on this, at this spot. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to be with us here at 6 o'clock tonight as we continue to study the book of Acts. 
And uh, this Wednesday, we won't have our Wednesday night Bible study with Thanksgiving and everything going on. We, uh, we generally don't, don't have service there. And uh, so our next time after 6 o'clock tonight will be 1030 next Sunday morning, hopefully in person. We'll make that decision and termination later on this week. But have a happy Thanksgiving. If I don't get to see or talk to you between now and then, may God bless you, richly bless you and you and your home and your family. And may he keep us all safe and blessed and well as we, as we celebrate and be thankful for all that he's done for us. And may God's blessing go with us wherever we go and whatever we do. And I hope that you have a wonderful and a blessed and a safe Sunday and a tremendous Thanksgiving. And I thank God for all of his many blessings and for his rich, unlimited grace, mercy, and love. And may you be blessed. And we'll talk to you soon.